In the spirit of everyone going back to classes this past week, I decided I would give a comprehensive tour of my four years at Georgia Tech, all condensed into one place, because I still get a lot of comments in other videos asking me questions about what life is like at Tech. Previously, I made videos talking about all the classes that I took in college, so I'll link that playlist if you haven't already seen it. I'll talk a little bit about classes here, but I'm also gonna talk about social life, being in a dorm, hunting for jobs, and just pretty much anything else that was going on in my life during that year. It's gonna be a bit of a long one, so I'll leave timestamps down in the description if you just want to jump around. But with that out of the way, let's get started with freshman year. Freshman year of college, I was really starting out from zero. I went to high school up in Pennsylvania, and no one else in my graduating class went to Georgia Tech, so I knew exactly zero people when I started college. It was also just a huge transition because it was my first time spending more than a few nights away from home, and I was also living in a dorm with a total stranger, which, especially for the first semester, was not the greatest experience. Although I did luck out with a lot of the other people on my floor, a lot of them were really into computer science, and they ended up becoming some of my closest friends all throughout college. For anyone who's trying to stay at home instead of living in a dorm, I get it, especially if you're trying to save some money, but I'm confident that if I hadn't lived in a dorm my freshman year, my social life just would've been way worse without all the bumping into people in the hallway or going out to eat together with them, or just all the hour-long bathroom chats that we used to have. And speaking of which, freshman year I lived in Montana tag on West, and West was really the perfect fit for me. Depending on what you want to do, like going to football games or joining a frat or sorority, it might make more sense to live on East Campus, but I wasn't really interested in doing any of that stuff, and I had also toured tech back in the spring and had completely fallen in love with the atmosphere of West Campus, and to this day I still enjoy walking around West Campus because I think it's just a great pocket of completely forgetting that you're in the middle of a city until you look at the skyline and remember that you are in the thick of Atlanta. I'm not gonna go too in depth in this video about the differences between East and West Campus, but if you haven't already seen it, I made a vlog a few months before I graduated talking all about West Campus, so I'll make sure I link that. But getting back to my social life, or lack thereof, I spent 99% of my time freshman year just hanging out on campus to the point where I still needed to look at a map every time I went to the MARTA station or Piedmont Park. Part of that came from being really focused on my classes and just trying to hold a 4.0, which became a running thread all throughout my college years, which, while it looks great on my resume, is something that I've talked about regretting about my time at Georgia Tech. My freshman year, though, was a really weird blend of imposter syndrome, but also being strangely overconfident in my ability to get an internship. I wasn't sure I was even going to be able to cut it at Tech if I was going to be able to be above average because I came from a high school that wasn't terribly competitive, but then I also thought if I only applied to a handful of jobs, I'd probably be able to convert on one of them to get my first internship. Of the three years that I went out for internships in college, this was definitely the year that I was least aggressive, which was a huge mistake, and I made a whole video talking about all the other mistakes I made that almost cost me my freshman internship. But somehow, fortunately, at the end of my freshman year and literally the last week or two of the school year, I managed to get an internship, which I wasn't really expecting. I had blown another interview a few months before that and just thought it wasn't gonna happen. And the only reason that it came together was because I'd made a couple iOS apps back when I was in high school, and they wanted someone who could do mobile development. In hindsight, most of the classes freshman year were really pretty easy, with the exception of linear algebra, a lot of trouble with linear algebra. But I also didn't come in with that many credits from high school, which meant that I was mostly just taking intro classes. I took French that year, one and two, and actually did pretty well with it and have since forgotten literally all of it. But I also had my favorite professor of all of college that year, Dr. Nick Sturm for English two. I feel like that man could have taught me literally anything and somehow would have found a way to make it interesting and gotten me excited about it. And the handful of CS classes that I took that year were mostly pretty easy. I think at the time I thought discrete math might have been a little bit challenging, but CS 1301, CS 1331, I was mostly able to just breeze right through. Overall though, I had a really good freshman year. Yes, I had some issues in my dorm and just had zero social life, but I remember really liking tech at the end of my first year and just being really excited about the next three years. All right, sophomore year. <laughs> sophomore year was a lot better in some ways and a lot worse in others. In terms of housing, I was living in a four person apartment with three of my friends from freshman year and I had my own room, which was a major step up from freshman year, but we were stuck living in North Ave, which was on the complete opposite side of campus of West. Honestly, Nav isn't really that bad. It's just compared to living on West, it's not nearly as nice of an area and it's really far out on the edge of campus. And 
While I won't say I felt unsafe there, there were several incidents that happened in that vicinity while I was living there that just don't happen when you're living on West. Classes definitely got harder this year. I think for computer science stuff, I got into CS 1332, Data Structures and Algorithms, which is a fantastic class, especially for interviewing. And then I also started taking some low level programming classes, which was completely new to me, but is actually really quite interesting. This was also the year that I chose my threads, which if you don't know what that is, that's basically just your specializations. I chose devices and intelligence, and that basically dictated the classes I was going to take for the rest of college. I think my favorite course that year was Perception and Robotics. It's actually probably one of my favorite classes I took in all of college. I have no idea if they still run it like this, but instead of just doing traditional book learning, it was really hands-on. You got a little robot that you got to take home with you, and you you could program it to do different things. So you could just sit there for hours, you know, teaching it to drive up to a cube and then lift it up and sensing and putting it down somewhere else. It, it probably sounds silly, but honestly, this was so much more interesting and engaging than, you know, just reading a book and then taking a test on the, you know, theoretical material that you learned. I also took my first group project class, which was objects and design. A lot of people don't really take the class that seriously, but it's supposed to help prepare you for junior design, which I'll talk about more in the next section. The hardest class probably though was physics two. You know, physics one was hard, but physics two was just this perfect storm of a bad professor, a bad textbook, and bad TAs. I ended up actually doing fine in it because of the weighted grading scale, but I spent a lot of time studying for that course and just being super stressed out because was not a good time. In terms of jobs, I was a lot less naive than I was as a freshman, but I also had a lot less imposter syndrome because I now had one internship under my belt. I still wasn't doing any technical prep yet. I guess I just hadn't learned. But one of the most stressful parts of that experience was I got a return offer from my freshman internship, which was great, but had an expiration date in the fall and deciding whether or not to take that return offer and be guaranteed to have a job or passing up on it and just hoping that something else was gonna work out because I wanted to get experience with another company. And that was really tough because I loved my freshman internship and in hindsight, I actually liked it a lot better than my sophomore internship, but I still think I made the right decision because getting that experience of working in a different environment and a completely different culture as an intern, I think is very important because you want to see what other parts of the industry and what other companies are like. But anyways, I was able to land a few different interviews in the fall semester. I actually had three different interviews on the exact same day at one point, which was crazy. And I was lucky enough to have two different offers going into winter break. I took one of them and then all spring semester, I didn't have to worry about recruiting at all. From a social perspective, I was going out a lot more as a sophomore than I did as a freshman, which is still to say way less than the average college student. But I think part of that was just not living with a lot of my friends anymore. If I wanted to see them and hang out with them, it made sense to go out and eat off campus or to go do something because you weren't just bumping into them in the hallways or in the bathroom anymore. Overall, sophomore year was a really important growth year for me, but I also spent a lot of it just looking ahead to my junior year. I was thinking about the classes I was gonna take and I was already thinking about my junior internship before I'd even done my sophomore internship. And in hindsight, I probably should have spent a little bit more time just appreciating being a sophomore and the fact that things were only going to get harder the next year. Junior year, I ended up living in a seven person apartment on West. Yes, there were seven of us in that apartment, but it was the only way that I could live with my friends and to live on West. It actually worked out way better than I ever thought it could have. And there definitely is something fun about living with that many of your friends. Just don't use your imagination too much about how dirty it was. In terms of my classes, this was probably the hardest year with the caveat being that once COVID hit, Grading got a lot more flexible and some tests got dropped or became open note. So the classes got a little bit watered down once we went online. This was really the first year though that I started getting into a lot of major specific classes and thread specific classes. You know, algorithms for example, was just an amazing class. I learned so much in that class. Then intro to AI was pretty underwhelming. And then other classes were just not fun. I also took junior design this year, which is a year long group project working with a client. You're first designing something for them and then you actually implement it in the second semester. This was really a mixed bag because there were some parts that were genuinely useful, like learning how to lead a team and then delivering things and working with a client on requirements. But on the other hand, there were some parts that were just a complete waste of time or really could have benefited from some more instruction. The spring semester was probably my hardest semester in all of college. I had a couple of 4,000 level classes that were cross-listed with master students, which just made them even harder. And then I was also taking digital design lab, which 
at least for me, had some brutally long labs. In terms of jobs, I decided that I was going to spend the entire summer just focusing on studying up, and then I was gonna start applying to jobs as soon as they started opening. So I was literally applying to jobs for the next summer in July, and I was lucky enough to get an offer from Microsoft at the beginning of October. That summer prep ended up being a really big deal because once classes started, I didn't really have that much time to focus on interview prep anymore, but I also had my first round with Microsoft while I was in a hotel room in Disney over the summer. So if I had been prepping all summer, I would have just been completely unprepared for that interview. To anyone who struggles to get interviews in your earlier years of college, companies will be a lot more interested in you once you're a junior. I had several other people that I was interviewing with when I took my offer, and I'm pretty confident that if I'd kept applying as aggressively as I did, and I'd kept interviewing, I would have been able to get a few other really good offers. But at least for me, I was super happy to accept my offer for a great company in October, and then just not having to worry about it for the rest of the year. This was also the year that I started my YouTube channel. Today is going to be a video that I wish I had seen back when I was a prospective student, and it's five things I wish I knew before coming to Georgia Tech. Looking back, I really wish I had started it as a freshman, but I don't think I was that interested in videography back then, and I also probably didn't feel like I had the time to balance doing classwork with really anything else as a freshman. And I think that speaks to a broader theme, which is it was around that time that I realized that there was more to college than just trying to ace every single class. It wasn't that I started taking my classes less seriously, and I did keep doing very well in all of them, but I also just realized there were other things I wanted to do, and that's when I started writing my iOS apps again. I wish I had made that realization a little bit earlier in college, but at the same time, there's definitely a balance there, and if you don't put enough time into your classes, you're not gonna do well, and I know that if I had put in all that time, I probably wouldn't have ended up where I am right now. Overall, all things considered, I think junior year was probably my best year of college, at least before COVID hit. Yes, classes were getting harder, but I was also really excited to be working on things that were challenging, but also really interesting, and it also really felt like things were lining up well heading into my last year of college. Senior year was a fully remote year. I was on campus, but all my classes were online. And I was living in a six person apartment with the same set of friends on West, but it just really wasn't the same with not really going anywhere and a lot of my other friends not being around anymore. I'd spent all of college being really excited about my senior year, thinking it was gonna be when I was taking my most challenging and interesting computer science courses. And then in reality, because they were all online, a lot of them either were watered down or I just didn't learn the material nearly as well as I had been hoping to. Probably the most challenging class I took that year was robot intelligence planning, which I haven't touched anything remotely related to that ever since I graduated. The job I do has nothing to do with robots or real world sensing or really anything like that. I think two of the classes that stuck out the most from senior year were social psychology and computer law. They were both electives, I didn't have to take either of them, but both of them ended up being really fascinating. I know for some people, when it comes to picking electives, it's just trying to figure out what's easiest, but if you can find something that's genuinely interesting, that's not part of your core curriculum, that is a way better use of your time and your money than just taking something random. On that note, I ended up taking a finance elective though that year, and that was a complete waste of time. I barely learned anything in there. And since then, I've gotten more into finance. I've started self-studying it and learning more about it. And in all the books and stuff that I've read, I've learned so much more practical advice than anything I ever learned in that class. Which was really a bummer because I was actually really excited to take that class and I was hoping to learn a lot about finance and I was taking it with a lot of my friends. But if I could go back to senior year and switch out of any class, that would definitely be the one. Unsurprisingly, this was the least social year of college other than probably freshman year. I was lucky that I was living with my friends because otherwise I probably wouldn't have even been seeing them. But it was also a really good wake up call to remind me that all the things I'd been putting off from earlier in college that I said, oh, I'll just do later in college and I'll get around to it later, I couldn't do anymore. And that really sucked and it was my own fault. And this was also the first time during college that I wasn't hunting for a job. I had gotten a return offer from my junior internship and I'd taken that and it gave me more time to focus on other things, but it also just relieved me of that stress of having to do interviewing, interview prep, and also trying to figure out which companies were even willing to hire during COVID. The funny thing is, I don't know if this is just me, but I actually kind of missed it. I feel like there's a certain thrill you get when you get an email from a recruiter or a new coding challenge, and it just felt really strange to see other people doing that and to not be participating for the first time. I think if it wasn't for COVID, a lot of my classes that year would have been a lot more challenging and probably would have been more stressful, 
But on the flip side, I would have learned a lot more and just overall, it was a pretty underwhelming way to end college. But I also realized that wasn't Tech's fault and there were a lot of other people who didn't even get to come to campus at all. And doing my senior year from home just would have been a much worse way to end college. I still got to have a graduation ceremony. I got out with highest honors and then I promptly moved across the country and started my first job. And then of course I moved right back to Atlanta literally a year later, which financially was not the best decision, but I enjoy being here a lot more than I did when I was a student. I'm a lot less stressed and I feel like I have the ability to go out and explore and do a lot more stuff around here than I ever did back when I was a student. All right, well, that was a very condensed version of my four years at Georgia Tech. If you have any questions at all, leave them down in the comments below. Anyways, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. I know it was a long one and I'll catch you guys in the next one.